And this question is from partial fractions section, which means we probably want to use partial fractions. If it wasn't from partial fractions, how would I know to use partial fractions? That's kind of tricky. So I've written a few things down here that'll be true regardless of uh, how we decide to integrate this. This is a solid of revolution uh, that we want to find the volume. So there's two methods. There's the washer and the uh, shell. Sometimes the washer is called the disc uh, or slices and the shell can be called cylinder method as well. Anyways, I have the two formulas written down here. The first one is shells and it uses the cylinder uh, volume. And the second one is disks. All right, I'm gonna use disks. Why is that? Let's look at what we're gonna be integrating. It's gonna be real tricky to integrate this if uh, that square root survives. And how can we eliminate the square root? Well, if you look, the disk method squares both of those functions. And that squaring is gonna eliminate the square root. So that's why I am going to try to go with disks instead of shells. Now, the graph you're looking at is not actually the graph of this function. So what I did, I know my x values are between 4 and 7. That's easy, no problem. You see that right there on the x-axis. y equals 0 is the x-axis, so that's one of the bounds. So that's the x-axis right there. It's one of the bounds. And the other bound is this crazy function. Now, I don't know what the graph looks like. I could go and graph it on Desmos. I could plot some points and graph it more accurately. But what is important is the y value is greater than 0 between 4 and 7. How do I know that? Because, well, first of all, x is positive because it's more than 4. 8 minus x. This is going to be positive unless x is is greater than 8, in which case 8 minus a large value is going to be negative. But between 4 and 7, 8 minus x is positive. So this whole fraction, it's 1 divided by a positive times a positive, so the whole fraction is positive, square root is positive, so the whole curve has to be greater than 0. What does it look like? I don't know. I don't think it looks like this, but that doesn't really matter. It looks like some curve that's above the x-axis. That is important. All right, we're rotating about the x-axis. So what I'm going to do, I've already said why I'm going to go disks. So what's the cross section look like? I like to draw these in green. If I can get a green marker, here we go. All right, here is a cross section right there. It rotates into a disk right there. There is no little r. There is no hollow interior when we rotate this. So little r is going to equal zero. Because of the cross section I drew, this is a dx integral. That cross section, that vertical cross section, you have to move it left and right to cover the whole region. And that moving left and right, that means it's a dx integral. So big R of x is a function of x. Which function is it? It's that square root one that we were looking at earlier. It's this curve right here, which again is not accurately graphed other than it's positive. So it's square root. Actually, let's just go crazy. Let's just write down r squared is the square of that square root. Okay, so that's big R squared. So all we need to do is now plug that into our volume formula. Pi, I forgot to write a and b, of course, these have beginning and ending values. Our a and b is 4 and 7. We didn't have to do any intersecting to get those. That's nice. And it's pi r squared. I guess I probably could write the pi outside. 1 over x, 8 minus x. Okay, so here's where partial fractions comes in. So we need to decompose this fraction. So we have something over x plus something over 8 minus x. 
Now normally we would have written that as x minus eight, but I'm just writing it the way uh, in this order here, eight minus x. I don't think it'll make a big difference. Multiply by always the full denominator. So multiply both sides by x times eight minus x. So we get one equals a eight minus x plus b x. All right, in this form, pretty obvious. If x is zero, you'll eliminate b. So x is zero, we get one equals a times eight minus zero plus zero. So a is one eighth. Now to get b, you could plug this a value back in, but we can get b very easily. We're gonna use another x value, and that x value will be eight. We'll let x equal eight, and I'm copying again this right here except I'm just replacing x by eight. Remember, sometimes you get an x on the left side and you gotta make sure you plug in the x value everywhere you see x. All right, so x is eight. We have a times zero is zero plus b times eight. Look at this, we get another one eighth for b. Okay. So we know a and b are one eighth. So we can take this decomposition and we'll go ahead and write them in the integral. All right, unfortunately we have multi-story fractions, one eighth over x, so that's a over x plus b, one eighth over eight minus x. If you've done some of these problems, you know that natural log is gonna be most of these antiderivatives. So we'll factor out the 1 eighth and then break up the integral into 1 over x dx plus integral 1 over here. If I read as x minus 8, how does that relate to 8 minus x? That's the negative. I just made the 8 negative and the x negative and the negative x negative. And one way to do that is multiply by negative one over negative one. I can squeeze that in here. And then that would make this negative one on the top. All right, you could have done a u sub if you left it like this and your, d, your u would be eight minus x, du would be negative dx. Totally reasonable to do a u sub on that and not do this algebra that I just did. Now in this form, they're both natural log. You don't really need to do a u sub if you've done enough antiderivatives at this point in your life. Uh, totally forgot the four and the seven. Believe these are absolute values which will come into play, which will not come into play for us, but just in case, All right, we're gonna plug in seven. So it's ln seven minus ln seven minus eight. Oh yeah, look at that. Negative one. We did get negatives, all right. So that would be negative one, yes. Okay minus, so that's the positive one, minus, and the pi over eight times the whole thing. Now plug it in four, ln four minus ln four minus eight is negative four. All right, ln seven minus ln, this is ln of one, ln of one is zero, so that's disappearing. If you look at the second one over here, they're both ln four, so they're going to cancel. This one's ln four minus ln of absolute value of four, which is ln four. So I'll just write minus zero minus zero. So it's just pi over eight times ln of seven. Don't have my keyboard plugged in, so I'm gonna use my phone so you can't see my calculation, but I'm not gonna 
make sure I'm accurate here, even though you can't check. All right, calculator, scientific. All right, pi over eight. Pi divided by eight times ln seven equals point zero point seven six four one five seven. All right. So let's see how we did. By we I mean me. So one all right, looks great. Everything is working out. So I hope that was helpful for you. We had an easy decomposition to do, but some of the other things were tricky, 